Hello everyone, I am Mili Trivedi from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology and today we will study about gear system vibration theory as well as numerical. So for this let us consider two rotor system including gears. So we are having rotor A, rotor B. Rotor A is connected with gear C and gear C which is connected with gear D. Gear D and rotor B are connected with the shaft. Okay. Now here this is our system. For this system the distance between rotor A and gear C is L1 length and gear D and rotor B is L2 length. If we will consider the angular velocity of rotor A which is omega A. Angular velocity of gear C because they both are connected with the same shaft we have to consider omega A is equal to omega C. It means the angular velocity of rotor C is considered as omega A. Rotor B will rotate at a different speed. Why? Because there is a gear in between A and B. So, rotor B will rotate at omega B angular velocity so as gear D. Okay? So, here this is our system. Here I have already mentioned omega A and omega B rotation at here. If we want to consider the diameter, so let us consider between A and gear C there is a diameter D1 and between D and rotor B there is a diameter of D2. Okay. So now let us start our equivalent system. There are basically two equivalent systems in which in the first equivalent system we have to consider only rotor A as well as rotor B dash. Rotor B dash which is the imaginary rotor. Okay. And in the second equivalent system we have to consider three rotors. Rotor A, rotor C dash and rotor B dash. Now in this case we are considering only the inertia of gears. If you see our first equation, first diagram, rotor A and rotor B. So, in the first case, we are neglecting the inertia of gears. It means we are neglecting the gears itself. Okay. In the second diagram, we are considering rotor A, rotor C dash and rotor B dash, where C dash will represent the inertia of gears. Okay. So, now let us first of all consider case 1 in which we are considering neglecting the inertia of gears. Okay. So, let us have two rotor system. If we are having two rotor system, let us compare kinetic energy of original system with kinetic energy of equivalent system. Now, what is the original system? In the original system, we have to consider kinetic energy of section L1 plus kinetic energy of section L2. In the equivalent system, we have to consider kinetic energy of section L1 as it is, but there is a change in a kinetic energy of section L2 dash. So, we have to consider kinetic energy of section L2 dash. Okay. Now, let us compare with the kinetic energies. So, what is the kinetic energy? It is half of Ia omega e square of a rotor A. In this case, we do not consider the inertia of gears. It means rotor C we cannot consider. So, here half of Ia omega e square plus half of Ib omega B square. So, in the second case, which is of the equivalent, we have to consider half of Ia omega A square plus half of Ib dash omega B dash. Okay. So, here if you see at right hand side as well as left hand side position, half of Ia omega A square can be cancelled. So, here finally we will get the equation in the form of half of Ia omega B square is equal to half of IB dash omega B dash square. Okay. Now, half can again be cancelled. So, finally we can write IB omega B square is equal to IB dash omega A square. Why here omega A square? Because rotor A and rotor B dash are attached at a single shaft. So, here two rotor system equation can be considered. So, here omega A square. So, finally the value of IB dash is equal to IB omega B square upon omega E square. We are having this equation. Okay. Now, this is the gear ratio itself. So, that we can write IB dash is equal to IB 1 upon G whole square or we can write 1 by G square. 
So this is our equation 1 in which we are considering or neglecting the inertia of heat. Okay? Now, this is the standard equation which you need to remember. Now let us have our equation. Let us compare both the potential energy of the original system. So, potential of original is equal to potential of equivalent. So, here of the original, potential of L1 plus potential of section L2. Similarly, potential of section L1 plus potential of section L2 dash. So, in this case, potential of section L1 in both the side can be cancelled. So, finally, potential of section L2 we need to bunch. And that is half of T2 theta 2 square plus half of T2 dash theta 2 dash square. So by comparing this, as we know, we have the equation of T by J is equal to G theta by L. So T is equal to GJ theta by L. So let us put the equation so that half can be cancelled at both the side. And finally G can also be cancelled. So finally we can write equation as pi by 32 d2 raised to 4 theta 2 square by L2 is equal to pi by 32 d1 raised to 4 theta 2 dash square by L2 dash. Okay. So, this is our equation. Now, let us put theta value. Now, what is theta? It is omega into t. So, let us have by putting the values of theta 2, what we will get? We will get L2 dash is equal to L2 d1 by d2 raised to 4 omega a by omega b square. So, here finally we will get the answer in the form of L2 dash is equal to L2 g square d1 by d2 raised to 4. So, this is our equation number 2. You have to remember this equation also. This will help you to find out the L2 dash value. Okay. Now, if we want to find out the L2 dash, we have to compare L equivalent is equal to L1 plus L2 and so that we can reach up to at infinite point. Now let us have, let us write the, both the equations and solve this equation. Now let us consider the inertia of gears. It means this is none other than the case 2. <coughs> For this, kinetic energy of original system is equal to kinetic energy of equivalent system. So now, for section L1 as well as section L2, and here for section L1 and section L2 dash. Now in this case, as you see, in this case we are considering inertia of gears. So if we consider inertia of gears, then so here for this section L1 we have to consider half of I A omega A square plus half of I C omega A square plus half of I D omega B square plus half of I B omega B square. It means each and every object's inertia or kinetic energy we have to consider. Now for the equivalent system, we are considering only three rotor system. So for this, half of Ia omega A square plus half of Ic dash omega A square plus half of Ib dash omega A square. So this is our equation. Now omega A square can be cancelled at both the side. Ib omega B square and Ib dash omega A square can also be cancelled. Okay? According to our first case. So, here finally we will get the equation as half of IC omega A square plus half of ID omega B square is equal to half of IC dash omega A square. Now, half value at both these sides can be common and cancel out. And finally, if we divide this equation with omega A square, we will get the equation as IC plus ID omega B by omega A whole square plus IC dash. So finally we will get IC dash is equal to IC plus ID by G square. So this is the inertia of gears and equation 3. Okay. Now let us have our numerical. An electric motor running at 0250 rpm drives a centrifugal pump running at 650 rpm through a single stage gear reduction. The motor armature has a moment of inertia of 32 kg meter square. Pump impeller has a moment of inertia of 84 kg meter square. And shaft from the pump to the gear is 90 mm in diameter and 3.6 meter long. That from the motor to the gear is 0. 0.6 meter long. What should be the diameter of a shaft from the motor to the gear to ensure that the node of the natural torsional vibration is at gears? 
determine the natural frequency of these vibrations and inertia of shafts and gear may be neglected. The modulus of rigidity of the shaft can be taken as 80 giga newton per meter square. So now let us have our diagram. There is rotor A, gear C, gear D, gear B in which we need to neglect the inertia of gears. So here the length is L1 which is constant, L2 which is also constant. Omega A we have the value and omega B we have the value. Okay. So now let us solve this numerical. In which we are we do not consider the inertia of gears. Hence, rotor A and rotor B dash is only considered. So here L1 length which is constant as uh, rated earlier and we have to consider the L2 dash. Okay. Let us consider the gear ratio. Because both the speeds of input and output is given to us. Hence, gear ratio G is 3.46. Okay. Now let us put this value. Now IA is equal to 32 kg meter square which is given. IB is 84 kg meter square which is given. Then L1 is equal to 0.6 meter and diameter D1 we need to find out. L2 is 3.6 meter and diameter of D2 is 90 mm which is given to us. So now modulus of rigidity which is 80 into 10 is to 9 newton per meter square which is given to us. Now let us solve the problem. For solving this problem, first of all, we have to calculate the equivalent of two rotor system. So for this, we have to calculate IB dash, which is IB by G square. So here, we will get the answer as 7.01 kg meter square. Let us have L equivalent. So equivalent length is L1 plus L2 dash. So here, L1 plus G square L2, D by D2 is to 4. So by putting the values in our equation, we will get the answer in the form of D is to 4 and that is 0.6 plus 656877.915 D is to 4. So here for the two rotor system we will get IALA is equal to IB dash LB dash and finally we will get the relation and value of IB dash which is LB dash is equal to 2.739 meter. Now let us solve the equation. Le is equal to La plus Lb dash. So here, what is Le? It is 0.6 plus 656877.915 d is to 4 is equal to 0.6 plus 2.739. By putting these values, we will get d is equal to 0 0.04518 meter. Okay, so here D is equal to 45.18 meter. This is our answer. But now what is the natural frequency? It is under root of GJ upon LA IA. Now by putting the values of LA as well as IA, we will get angular frequency, angular velocity as 41.28 radian per second and frequency as omega n by 2 pi which is equal to 6.57 hertz which is our answer to. So here we are considering both the, numeric, uh, the numerical as well as theory. If you have any query, you can ask. Thank you.